Hello, I'm Daniela, and welcome to the last video in the Slow Stitching Crazy Quilt Block Workshop Series. This video is designed to give you some ideas using some freestanding stitches to add to your block. I use the St. George Cross as well as some French knots and just some other little things in the video. So let's get started right away. So here I have my block, given it some time to rest in my mind, and I want to add some freestanding stitches. I like to go by some of these blank spaces here and add some stitches. Now, one of the stitches I want to add is a very simple stitch. It's called the St. George's Cross, or the St. George Cross, and it's a very simple stitch. It can be used in a row, as you see here. It can be freestanding, or it can just be scattered kind of like snow. And so that's the effect I want to take. It can be made in any size. I really like that. And I think I'm going to add a bunch of colors here. And I had these three colors in mind. The blue, the navy, and that dark purple. 755 dark purple, 336 navy, and that 597. This is the blue we used for the loops here. So I'm just going to mark a few areas to make the cross. And it's really a plus sign. Add a few here and there. And I'm kind of weighing it on this side of my piece. I considered putting some buttons on it as well. And I can still do that if I want. But right now I want to add these little crosses and see what happens. I'm trying not to make them in any row, but just kind of sticking them in here and there. Because I want to use multiple colors, I'm going to start with my darkest color, and that's going to be that purple. Now to do the St. George cross, you come over from left to right, and you want to do that horizontal line first. So I come in, and then go straight across, and then I'm going to come up top and go straight down. And that's just one stitch of the St. George cross. And I can move over here, just going to kind of scatter it around, somewhat random. And I'll do a few of these. So now I'm going to switch color and do my navy blue, and then fill it in with that lighter blue. So there I have my crosses, and it adds a different element to the piece, a little more texture, and it kind of pulls it away. The eye is kind of now going around the perimeter. So now I want to take this thread, this is the blue that I use the stitch here, and just make a little series of French knots. And I think I'll actually carry them across, maybe from here until here. I happen to like the French knot stitch, and if I add a few of them, I think it'll continue to draw the eye around the piece. So I'll mark some spots. Now for the French knots, I'm going to use this beautiful color blue. This is the blue that we stitched down the piece with. It's in the 931. So I'll come up here and I'll start on this side because I can clearly see my marks this way. And I'll just pull the thread through with a knot at the end of the needle. Then I'll wrap it around three times, keeping the tension on both the thread here and where I'm putting my needle back in my fabric, very close to the area where I came out, but not the same area. And then I pull it through, and I have a beautiful French knot. I'll complete the series of knots, and then we'll take a look at our piece and see if there's additional elements I'd like to add. So these are the dots at the end here. It's just a minor effect, a simple little piece. Before I add the buttons, or at least audition the buttons, I have some of this very light colored thread, 3042. And I'm going to just take a moment and stitch inside of each of these flowers just some, some stitches, just to embellish and add a little pop of color, just trying to unite it together. So I'm just taking a stitch and using the little architecture of the particular lace and going around the center. And I'll do that on all three of them, just to add a little more color. That kind of brings the entire piece together. 
So that's the added stitches on the lace. And you can see how it pulls that color in and breaks up that lace. So now I can continue adding additional elements if I want. I'm really pleased with the way this came out. I did have these buttons and they're kind of calling to me. I don't really know if I want to use them or how I want to use them. So I really just play around. That's kind of an interesting addition, but it really makes these two areas look very bare. I don't want to add buttons to this piece. And these buttons are too dark for this. I definitely like the additional buttons there. Maybe I can add it here. No, I don't like that. I think if I add these buttons, I need something to balance it out over here. No, I'm not really quite sure what. I can add additional French knots with that lighter color. Because I think that'll pull it in. And then maybe just with the darker color over here. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll continue building up this piece and this pulls in those three colors. So I'll stitch those along and show you how it looks. So I added the French knots on the bottom here in the different colors, pulling from up top here to add a little bit of balance. I also added some French knots on the side here. Now the interesting thing about this quilted block is that we treated each piece individually but yet there was some layover, some additional layers that combined them and brought them together. Another feature about this crazy quilt block is you want the eye to travel around the block. It's a fun way to use the colors and the stitches and the size of the elements to your advantage. So here we have three major elements just by size, but then we have three elements based on color. We have a lot of lines separating the piece, and yet they're not exactly straight lines. You've got the little zigzag here of the rickrack, and you've got the loopiness here of that threaded back stitch. You've got the same thing with the lace. There's a lot of repetition as well. We have lots of circles, the pearls in this lace, the roundness of the buttons, these flowers, the curves of the loops, the curves of the chain stitch. Then there's a lot of solid color. We've got that velvet trim and that buttonhole stitch here that looks solid, as well as some solid pieces. There's lots of texture, lots of raising up of this piece. You can see if I turn it on the side, you've got the height from this, the pearls, the buttons. It's a beautiful effect. In a future video, I'll show you how I implement this particular panel and use this on the front of a pillow so it becomes a functional piece of art. I also wanted to show you a variation using the same techniques but different fabrics because no matter what quilt block you make, it will vary depending on the supplies that you use, the stitches you choose, the size you make the stitches, and so on. So here's our original one. And here's the quilt block that I showed the steps for, for the paid membership. Same technique, same size, but because I'm using the different materials and a different color scheme, it has a completely different effect. So that's my completed quilt block. I hope you found this workshop helpful and useful. And if you didn't create a completed block, I hope you found some of the stitches very useful to learn or you're intrigued by them to learn further. If you've enjoyed this series, please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And please consider becoming a paid member of my channel. Thank you for joining me today.